What is up guys? Welcome back to the channel. My name is Travis. This is TWA Motorsports and today you can see we have the Trans Am all opened up and that is because we are going to be doing the key audio install. So he bought, in the last video on this thing, uh, we got the double den installed and I told you guys that the next step would be to put the speakers in. So today we're going to do that. Um, he's we got him sitting over there. He ordered the stage three kit, which comes with new, I think they're four and a halfs in the back, six and a halfs maybe in the door. And then like kind of a mid base subwoofer type setup for the panels here. So, uh, we're going to get it all done in this video. I don't know if we're all going to do it all in one day because my heater out here in the shop has quit. And so it is very, very cold, but, uh, I think we're going to start back here in the back and we'll just kind of show you the components instead of showing them all they're, they're still boxed up over there. Uh, we'll kind of show them to you as we go, but I think we'll start here in the back and work our way forward, get the, all the back stuff done because we got to take these out to replace those speakers and we have to have this out in order to get the sail panel out. So it all kind of ties in together, but let's start back here. Uh, we'll get this tray out first. I'm going to actually use two hands. I don't want to snap anything, especially with it being so cool out here. Uh, we'll get that out and then get these panels popped off. So we got to get this guy out. I don't know where we're going to set this stuff. So once we get it out, this side is clips. This side, I like to use a big flathead screwdriver and you just kind of kind of push down on it. The, one of the things I hated, always hated about these cars is people would try to get their spare tire out or get in this compartment and they just really hammer down on it. You just lightly need to turn. Once we get that loose, you should come out of the pocket. And then there's two snaps up here. So if you pull straight up, just like that, you're unhooked. And then this will reveal our first speaker that we need, we're gonna be replacing. And I don't know if you guys can see this, but these things are riveted from the factory into their position. So it kind of sucks that we have to deal with that, but we're gonna go ahead and unplug them. And we'll get this set aside. I don't know if we wanna start here. I guess we could. Let's just go ahead and push the speaker grill out all the way around. There's little clips. Don't just yank it from the outside. And then you can see our speaker here. So what we'll probably do is just drill these rivets out. Um, we may go grab the new speaker and take a look at how it kind of goes together. We're going to work our way down this side, popping these little clips loose. And same thing. Got to pull straight up. Ooh. This one's a little more snug. There we go. A lot of people break these because they pull them out the incorrect way. I think we're going to work on these first, is what I think. So I'm going to see about drilling. I'm going to grab a drill. I actually may not even need a drill. I may be able to just snap the ends off right here of that um, rivet. I think I can just smash the end of it and that speaker will just turn it because it's got little indentions that hold it here. I think we can just snap that off and pull the speaker out. I actually thought I could, uh, like I said, snap the end of that off, but I, I wasn't able to do that. So we just drilled through, they're just aluminum rivets. So once you do that, you can, there's only two. You can spin this thing sideways and it's out of place. Now, the new kit does not come with a any kind of screws or anything to hold this in. Now, could you probably just spin it into place and be okay? Yeah, probably, but we're not gonna do it that way. We're gonna do a couple things. One, the new speaker doesn't come with any leads either. So we're gonna, we're gonna since we're not using reusing these speakers, we're gonna cut these leads off and we're gonna cut them off right here right up close to where they connect. And then this speaker here, which is the new replacement, we're gonna put it in here and I may just use a rivet like they did because it fits nice. You can see that it lines up for the most part. Um, those little indentions, the speaker grill itself isn't quite as long, but yeah, we can still, I think we can still rivet that though. So we'll run an, 
another rivet through that if I've got one that small, which I think I do. So off camera over there, here's what I did. I actually riveted it in all four corners. Um, when I drilled out the factory rivet, I didn't have a rivet the right size. And it was pretty snug as far as the fitment, but I actually drilled two more holes and through that because it's not quite wide enough to grab those little pieces but man is it sturdy now it is definitely not going anywhere and it's a way better quality speaker i actually think these were probably good still uh, but for now i can go ahead and put this back on um, i just use an eighth inch rivet eighth inch drill bit and i can put the cover back on and then all we need to do is i'm going i've got some connectors here that we will will strip down what we cut off here so the factory plug, so it'll make it nice and easy plugging it in. And we will hook the appropriate connectors on to fit onto this guy. And this one will be done. So that one was pretty simple. It's nice when stuff fits, guys. Here we go. This one, uh, man, this one was pretty easy, guys, honestly. You've got it. You can see I put my connectors on here. Factory connector, red positive, black negative. We are good and it looks factory. I heat shrinked this and um, everything's nice and snug. I got the grill back on. So this guy is ready to go back in after we do the sail panels. So we're gonna, we're gonna have to, we'll go ahead and knock the other one out here, get the new one riveted in it. And then we will move on to taking some stuff out to get the sail panels out. Now that we got those both done, guys, we're gonna move on to the sail panels. So the sail panels have to come out, obviously. I'm not gonna try this. You could probably sneak the grills out and do it. I don't like doing it that way. So what I'm gonna do is we're gonna have to take, the seat is gonna have to for sure fold down. And then to me, it's easier to go ahead and take these loose. These are an 18 millimeter right here. And so we're gonna take the 18 out of both of these and get them off this little stud. And then he's working on the seat bases, uh, which I think will give us a little more room that we need. And those are 13s. They're just one 13 millimeter that holds the front side of these seats in. So he's getting those right now to get the base of the seats out. And then we'll worry about the little plastic clips and whatnot here in just a second. You can see we've got those out of place. We may fold the seat down, but what he's working on right now is he got, we need to take the screws out of this. He's taking this one out right here. You can see that. So I don't think we need to take them all out because we just need to sneak out a little bit of this. The other thing though, we have two more things to take out. Um, actually, you know what? We don't even have to take that out. I was gonna say the T-top holder, but it's actually one separate piece. We should be able to slide out from behind it. So the next biggest thing is this guy. And this thing here, in my experience, if you get something under it like that and pop it loose, like a small flat blade screwdriver, if you keep doing that, you can walk this thing out. And I may get another one for the top. So you can see there. And I'm trying to be careful because I don't like scratching these up and making them look like they've been removed before. So I'll do it off camera probably since I can have two hands and not be holding the camera. Uh, we'll get this out and this whole panel should be loose at that point. I'm hoping we don't have to take the bottom seat belt out. Sorry, I'm shining right in the light uh, or the camera right in the light. but. Uh, I don't think we'll have to take that out. I think we can sneak things around with at this point. Okay, we are gonna take the two Phillips out right here and get this panel out of place. I, it just, guys, it's cold out here and I don't wanna risk snapping any of this plastic. Uh, I was able to pull it forward, but it's just, it was putting some pressure on this and we don't wanna break it. One other thing I completely forgot about is this Torx right here that holds the top side of the seat. Don't know why I completely forgot, but I did. We do have to take that out. Um, you could try to sneak around it, but like I said, guys, you, you could risk cracking the plastic and it holds it pretty snug here. So he got that side out. You can see it's out. Now this side's out. We should be able to get this panel started and loose. Um, guys, look, just be careful. Oh, look, there's a little bit of glue here. That's great. That's not factory. So I'm gonna get it here on the bottom. We're gonna slide it out from under this piece. That's what I'm hoping to do. There we go. And then we'll kind of wiggle it back and forth and get it out of here. Here, watch out. I'm gonna back up. There it is. Get it over the seat belt. 
looks like a couple of our pieces kind of stayed on i may have to renegotiate that you can see the these are supposed to be velcroed up in there i don't know what this glue is about i know that's not factory though but you could see you could damage you could essentially damage these things if you tried to pull the grill out you could probably snap them now we have pretty good access to the speaker he's going to go ahead and uh they're probably like seven millimeters aren't they yeah, yeah he's going to grab a seven and uh, get those things out of place I did want to tell you guys, this is a T50, by the way, if you were curious, those pieces that came in on the side that held the back of the seat up. I forgot to tell you guys that. He's going to open these other ones, but now that we got this out, you can see these are a dual voice coil. Um, so we'll definitely have to cut these off, but he's grabbing these other ones out of here and we'll take a look at, but I think they're push style connectors, kind of like a subwoofer, which is nice. We don't have to use any of our um, pieces like this. Uh, I believe they work like a sub. Yeah, see, look at the side of them. So we just push them up and there should be a set on both sides. There is, perfect. These things are beefy. Look at that. Holy cow. That's like a true mid base or sub. Man, these are nice. All right, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna see if our original holes line up. Um, that would be best case scenario. They may or may not. Um, we'll give it a shot because I want to test fit it before we put any of the, I mean, I guess it doesn't matter because the wires are push connects, but I still want to set it up in there and make sure our holes line up. It is so exciting when they have the push connectors like this. You don't have to put any ends on. Uh, red to red, black to black. Pretty simple, guys. And they line up incredible. They actually fit right where the original holes are, which is unheard of. It's worth buying this kit just for that. Now, unlike the factory speaker, so you can see we got it in, um, it has a little piece of cardboard. You can see it on the bottom of that speaker. We haven't got it out yet. That kind of protects this wire against this area right here. So we're going to uh, tape this up really well, like a couple layers of tape, then push it back into place. So we know that it's not gonna go down the road and like eventually wear through, cause that's a pretty sharp edge there. We've got both sides in now. Um, and you can see where I taped it up quite a bit here because I didn't want it to rattle, like I said, and cut through that. But uh, I think we're gonna test the back ones here off camera just to make sure everything works. You know, there's nothing worse than putting stuff back together and realizing crap, we completely forgot um, or something didn't work and we've got all this back together now. So we'll at least test these uh, before we put this panel back in. We just tested them and everything's working. Uh, the cool thing is we were able to fade to the back and just hear the backs and guys, they are crystal clear in comparison to what the factory stuff is. But the problem is, is a majority of your sound comes from the door. So it's just too cold out here today. I don't think we're gonna finish the doors, but what we are gonna do is I think I'm gonna have him or he's gonna vacuum this area, you know, like behind the panels here. And once we do that, I'm gonna go ahead and put these panels back in off camera. I am gonna go, I am gonna put some new two-sided tape where these Velcro pieces came off. Not really sure what the deal is with that, but uh, we'll get those adjusted and those pieces back in. The only real thing you need to watch when you're going back in with these panels, guys, is this guy right here kind of goes in between. This is your um, deck lid struts. So, uh, you know, make sure that you get that lined up as you're going back into place. But other than that, it's just a reverse process getting the sail panel back in. Now we're gonna move on to the driver and passenger side door panels where a majority, I, I think, guys, of the sound actually comes. So uh, we're gonna go grab a few tools. You're gonna need a couple Phillips screwdrivers. It might not be too bad to have some picks. And uh, we're gonna start getting this apart, but I'll set you guys up and show you as we're pulling the door panel off of this thing. Now, like I said, got a couple Phillips screwdrivers and we're going to start up here at this little corner piece. Guys, if you get these too tight, they're easily broken, but we need it out of the way. There's generally a couple pieces of rubber in the back of it as well. So a lot of times they're cracked. This one's cracked. And so the little piece of rubber is stuck right here. This is pretty common. These little guys right here break off. That one is completely trashed but that's not gonna hurt it. I think it'll stay in place. And then I'm gonna go ahead and take the other one out. And we'll just line it up when we're going back together. 
So we got that. At least the screw hole is not broken or doesn't look to be. It's pretty common for those to break. All right, so once we get that one, we got another guy right here, Phillips. And I don't know if this door panel has been off before. Sure seems pretty snug here. Got that one. There's another one that comes in here in the pocket in the door. We're gonna get it out. And then there's a few more um, that are kind of hidden. These are big guys, uh, so they're easy to spot or know where what goes. Let's put it that way. So look how long that thing is. So we got that one. Now, there's one here under the door panel or under the handle here. And then there should be another one kind of going back in this area right here. So you got to come up from, from this area. So we'll get both of those out. And I actually think I may need a longer screwdriver to get that one. But this one here I should be able to get with this one. I like to take all these out first before I do anything else. Um, sometimes your switches will release a little bit and you get a little more room to pull the switch out because we do have to pull it out because it sets in this. So, and these are all that bigger size like that. So let me get this other one out. I'm, like I said, I think I'll have to go. I don't think I can get it with this screwdriver. I think. I'm going to have to get a longer screwdriver and it'd help if this, the, the head of the screwdriver were a little bigger because those are so big. I wanted to show you I got that last one out, same size as the other two that go into the door. So the only small one is the one that comes in right here. So now we're loose, okay? I'm going to take this guy, which is like a plastic pry tool, and we're just going to gradually lift up on this area at the bottom and then work our way up to the top and try to do the same. There we go. And if you're careful, this is already broken. I don't know if you guys, well, you won't be able to see that, but there's these two little tabs, these set in, and a lot of times they break uh, just over the years, just driving it down the road, not necessarily somebody, I mean, believe me, somebody taking it apart incorrectly could cause that too, but we'll get our wires off here. This is old school connection. Guys, they're wrapped in tape. And then our switch is out of the way. Once our switch is out, then we should be able to pull this guy loose. Thread it off. I think we'll have to take our, generally we can get our unlock thing here out as well. Ooh, it is, it's on there. Maybe I'll slide it out. Come on. Now, there we go. We get it unclipped. This our unlock deal is just clipped to a rod, and so that's what's going to give me the biggest fight. It looks like. There we go. So you can see where it clips on the rod there. Once we have that out, then we should be able to thread this guy off. And then you do have a light. We'll have to unhook it. If you turn it, you should be able to pull it out of the socket. Ooh. There we go. All the Pontiac stuff has a red light or a red filter over the light. I don't even know if those work. It'd be a good time if you had some to replace them. This one doesn't look blown, but when he gets out here, I may have him um, try it. Okay, so we're, it looks like we're done, right? With screws, we have one more. Uh, just when you think you're finished, see this guy right here? So that's another reason why you have to pull these switches out in order to get everything out of the way. Otherwise, you would snap the door panel right here. And that should be all of your screws. Now you guys know that these door panels are very brittle. You can see the crack in this one. So we're gonna lift up gradually because they kind of 
there's hooks on the back that set down so you don't pull them out towards you you push them down and this one is being stubborn which a lot of them are there you go that bottom one is sticking there we go all right got it out of there one last thing we need to unhook is our tweeter connection, which is just like all the other GM stuff. It's just a clip. Get it unhooked. And this also, guys, here, here's another cool thing we can do while we're in here is these little felt strips. Let's see if I can move the camera up here. These felt strips, you need to make sure there's still felt on them. They're not busted. Mine look like, well, his, I say mine. They look like they're in really good shape um, and the window is set in a good position. So we're gonna leave those because he's wanting to tint his windows. Guys, if you tint your windows in one of these cars and those are bad or your felt's not there, it will put a nice little streak when you roll down the window for the first time. So we're gonna go set this aside for now. I don't know exactly how I'm gonna put the, the tweeters in this system. We'll just have to take a look at it and see. We may, I don't really want to go in here and take these out because the way they're mounted, uh, that would not be my preference. But if that's the only way we can do it, that's the only way we'll do it. But let's go grab the, well, let's go grab something to get the speaker out. Now to get the speaker out, I've got a seven millimeter here and we're going to take the whole pocket out. We're not actually going to take the speaker out of the pod. Um, we are going to take the pod out of the door. So seven millimeters, should be three of them, I believe. I think on the Camaro there's four. Once we get that off, let's pull the speaker out and see if we can get it unplugged here. There we go. So that is what we needed. So the next thing we're gonna do is we're going to take this clip off. And I brought a little screwdriver over here for random stuff like this. So once we get that off, you can untangle this wire. It kind of has a keeper here. And then we are going to take these, I believe these are, these are quarter inch. We're gonna take these quarter inch bolts or screws out and um, get the speaker out of place. Once we got our speaker, uh, those screws out, sometimes it's a little sticky, but you can pull this out and this is what we need. All right, so what I'm going to do so we can continue to use this guy is I'm going to cut these leads off just like we did on the back speakers. I'm gonna cut these leads off right up against this right here so we can add our crimp connectors to go on to the new terminals. So I'm gonna go over to the bench, grab the cutters, cut that off, and crimp two terminals on here. I actually moved over here to the door panel and I wanna show you guys a couple things. So you don't have to necessarily replace the tweeter. And I'm not going to be using the factory crossover that came with it. What I'm going to rely on is this crossover that the factory used on the monsoon system. So what I'm going to do is I've already popped the grill out. If you, if you get like, if you pull this back just a little bit, you can see an indention down there and you can just pry it over a little bit and the grill will fall out. Um, in fact, he just picked it up. But in order to get this out, we need to undo that screw in the middle. And you need to be careful not to damage this right here because this is the filter. And so you need this in place and I wanna use all the factory plugs. So in order to do that, we'll take that Phillips screw out, get the tweeter out of place, and you will have to use a piece of like two-sided tape uh, to keep the new one in place. I'll flip it over here in a minute once I get this screw out and uh, kind of show you a little more, but be careful with this that's wrapped in foam. Well, I was gonna flip it over and show you guys, but I actually got it off without doing that. So uh, you can see these guys here. You got your positive and negative. I bent this terminal up a little bit so we could get that out of this holder. These are in great shape, so we're gonna reuse them. So I'm going to have to solder the new tweeter here. Obviously we have a positive and a negative. And then this is the old tweeter. I cut the leads off before I um, took the screw out of the middle. And once you get the screw out of the middle, this guy comes out of place. So 
I think, I know it says in the manual uh, for the new stuff to put it in with two-sided tape, but honestly, guys, I'm thinking that a guy might be able to, um, I don't know, we'll just see. I, I don't want to take this bracket out, but I feel like there's one of the mounts over there that would allow us to use the screw in the middle again, but we'll just have to take a look at it and see. I don't ever like the idea of using two-sided tape. Uh, I know the instructions say that. There's better options here, guys. So here's what I've done. I've taken the smaller um, tweeter holder and I used it. I put the screw that came with the kit through, through that original bracket that the old tweeter screwed to. Now, on the back side, because this thing comes with this bracket to hold this up against something, I trim the edges off. And so now my wire is going to come through the bottom. We've got it screwed on instead of using uh, two-sided tape. I mean, I'm sure, look, two-sided tape will probably hold it, but I just like this better. I just think it looks a little more professional. And so all I had to do is I did trim, obviously, the ears off of this to make it look like a cross now instead of like more of this design. Uh, I tried to put it up in there without doing that. It didn't really make a whole lot of sense. So we're going to try that. And hopefully we don't have any issues with clearance. I don't think so. This thing's got a gobber room here. I don't think we're going to hit anything. So let's go ahead now. And we're going to run our tweeter through here. Now the downside is doing it this way. I'm going to wrap this really well with tape because there is wire there. Um, but then also you're, we're going to have to solder it up against this. I don't have the ability to, to solder that big um, factory monsoon piece on without doing it this way. So this is the way I've chosen to do it. Wanted to show you guys this before I put it in. I put some heat shrink tubing on it because there is some, you know, there's metal there. It's not super sharp, but look, there's a chance it could rub up against it. So I wanted to protect that wire. So I put that on there. If you don't have any heat shrink, I suggest getting some for a job like this anyway. Uh, but now we can thread this through, snap the speaker in. And honestly, guys, we could go ahead and put the grill back in place too. Check it out. He, he threaded it through while I was pushing. Got that through there. It was a little snug, obviously, where that two-sided tape, or not two-sided tape, but the um, heat shrink was. But now we've got it into place, and I'm feeling good about this, guys. So now we can solder our connection on uh, for the original monsoon stuff, and we will be good with the tweeter. We can actually, he's got the uh, cover here, the closeout. Go ahead and put that sucker back on, because we are done right here. I was gonna say, I don't really want to break it. Perfect. Can't see anything. Nobody has any idea. Now have it soldered on, heat shrinked up, and I am going to just, I'm gonna hold it while he tapes around this, just maybe once or twice with some electrical tape. And then we will clip this right back where it was originally. Uh, I know that you guys saw it kind of pulled loose when we uh, took the door panel off, but I'm going to kind of smash it down with the pliers a little bit so we get a little bit more grip and uh, we'll be done with the tweeter. Got it all tied up. We're good to go there. So now we can go back to the other speaker, which I know we originally started working on guys, but I don't know. I guess I got in the, when I saw that the tweeters were separate, I got into that mode where I just wanted to fix those first. Now onto the speaker. Like I said, we're just putting the crimp connectors on, got some heat shrink on those too. And guys, look, this is a big complaint. And if you watch his video, um, he talks about this, but if you try to put the speaker in like this, your terminals are gonna hit. You can see how far out they stick. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and slide this guy into place on the terminals. And then you need to bend the terminals easily in so it clears this pod, because this speaker is the absolute biggest thing you can put into this holder. The other thing, guys, is I'm one of those picky guys that likes to see and nobody will ever know, but I want it to like read the correct direction. So, I mean, you'll get your holes lined up, but I don't want it upside down. I don't know why it matters to me, but it does. Holy cow, did this turn into a mess? Um, it does not fit. Okay. So he made a video, um, on this and not look nothing against him, but it doesn't fit. Uh, I don't know if they made different ones of these or not, but let me tell you what I had to do. The basket, first of all, he says it fits right up against this. Look how far I had to push that down. You see how much how much that is pushed down and bowed in the center from getting that speaker to the level point with the original mounting tabs? Okay, so it doesn't set flush up against that. Not happening. All right, so the next thing is 
bending these terminals over to where it clears. That was the original issue that he said that, and that's why he made the video. Okay, yeah, that helps, but the basket still hits. The basket is hitting on the ledge up top. You can trim it, which is what I did. I didn't show you guys that. You can see where I trimmed a portion of this off. Uh, I actually used a Dremel, which it does more melting than trimming, but it's in there. And so I, just so you guys know, if you, if you run into this issue, you are going to have to modify this. No ifs, ands, or buts, unless, look, hey, this is a 2001 we're working on. Maybe in 98, they had a little bit bigger um, piece, and that could be the difference between the two. So I, I have seen variances between years. So like I said, nothing against the stuff because the stuff sounds good and it's good quality stuff, but you are going to have to do a little bit of tweaking here and there to make things line up. I've got this put back in the door with the pod, the mod, we'll call it the modified pod. Um, anyway, only the three sevens, obviously we plugged the back in. Now, um, I'm not ready to put the door panel back on yet, so I'm not going to test the tweeter. Uh, I am going to, however, have him test the speaker here real quick and make sure that it works but um we may mess a little more with the door panel i don't know if we're gonna mess with the crack in it that's kind of what i'm thinking about doing so uh anyway let's just make sure that the speaker works and then we'll go to the other side and take care of it so we've got this side accomplished now um obviously guys just like the other side and you're probably wondering well, why is the door panel just hanging there well uh we wanted to test the tweeter and since they're on the panel, you kind of got to set it up in there. But I'm thinking the door panel cracks are driving me a little bit nutty, um, even though it's not my car, but they make me a little crazy. Uh, so we may try to address, we may try to address them in a future video. Uh, but the main reason, and that's just part of it. The second one is like these door panels are so easy to break and the pieces on them, like your switches and the piece that holds, that kind of, closes out your handle they're so easy to break and i'm wanting to get the windows tinted guys that i just don't want to put them back on until the windows are tinted so i think we're going to probably leave them off for the time being we're going to leave the window switches in here in case you had to roll the window up or down or if he wants to drive it or whatnot it's just not going to have any door panels for right now uh but this all the speakers are working so we're complete now he's gonna we're gonna get in here i don't know how good if maybe if you guys have headphones you can hear it. Um, it is so super crisp. The mid bass is great. Um, we'll try to play some copyright free junk that nobody wants to listen to, but maybe it'll give you guys, if you, like I said, if you have headphones in, maybe you'll have the opportunity to hear a little better quality. There we go. It is so super crisp. And the bass coming from this, this mid bass in the back, or I guess almost like a subwoofer. Super clean sound. Hopefully you guys can hear that, like if you have a set of headphones in, that's the only way you're gonna hear it. You won't be able to tell on your phone, but um, was it worth the money? I don't know, do you think so? It wasn't that expensive. Oh man, baller over here with this, <laughs> baller over here with his budget, you know, like you can't, man, $400, just like, it's nothing to him. Um, it was his, hey, it was his money. Um, I mean, if he thinks it's worth it, it's worth it. I, I actually, guys, I think it's probably worth it, as much crap as I'm giving them here. But, um, and just because we spent, I don't know, probably 300 on his last car for speakers, and these don't pop and crack, I, th I, I think it's worth it. Uh, the fitment issue, guys, look, I, like I said, I'm not trying to get on key audio or anything like that. I actually think he makes probably some of the best products for these cars. And that's like his, that's his bread and butter. That's his model is these pretty much these cars. Now he has some other options on his website, but um, I think he puts together a really good package. Um, I will tell you guys on the Camaro, we had a little bit of popping noise, which I think had more to do with the wiring of the factory monsoon system and um, the speakers that we use maybe uh, that could have caused the issue. But on this car, 
it sounds really, really crisp, really clean. Um, definitely a huge upgrade from the factory. And look, guys, you're, if you have one of these cars long enough, at this point, these cars are old enough where the speakers, even if you don't blow them up by listening to them, they just deteriorate and go to nothing. That's just that's just kind of the nature of having an older car. You're going to have to replace stuff, and why not buy nicer stuff when you do it? But uh, hopefully you guys enjoyed this video on this car. Let me know in the comments if you guys are kind of interested to see me mess with the door panels. I've never done that, right? I've seen a lot of stuff. I've seen a lot of videos. I know there's some stuff out there, um, but I ultimately, I'm, I'm pretty picky, so I like things a certain way. So we may mess with them a little bit. I don't know, we may not. If I could find a good driver's one, I may try to just fix the crack on the passenger. The fact that the driver's one is all the way through at the top here makes things a little more challenging. You know, it's got another one starting here. That, that doesn't bother me. This one right here going all the way through, I don't know that we can, I don't know if we can address it, but we may try. Let me know if you guys want to see that. But anyway, if you guys did enjoy this video on this stuff, go down there and hit that thumbs up button. Of course, like always guys, if you're not subscribed, if you haven't rang the bell icon to notify you every time we drop a new video, you got to go down there and do all that stuff and stay tuned to see what we do on this car next.